Pretty quick actually. Let's keep your system up to date and uh, how to do that in the terminal and also just in the GUI. Uh, probably by default when I log in here we're going to get prompted with a software update and it's really about as simple as that. Um, now and again you're going to be uh, asked if you want to do an actual distribution up or distribution upgrade if I could talk. Um, We'll actually probably get into that a little later. There is some chances of breaking systems and stuff when you do distribution upgrades, so uh, if you were new to Ubuntu, I would stick with what you got, stay with the updates until the uh, end of service, essentially, and then you'll have to do an upgrade uh, until you get familiar, familiar with things anyway. So we will log in here. I can actually pop into the right window. You should get a login, and while you've been working around installing applications, doing that kind of stuff, you should have been prompted with a software update by now, unless you installed updates during the uh, the initial install. Uh, I think it's under System in this menu, but you could search in the Unity menu for uh, Software Updater. So software Updater is here. I'm actually not going to install with the Software Updater here, so we can actually go through a command line install. Uh, it will check for updates and uh, that's something that unfortunately I won't be able to show it will already be up to date but I will show it in the command line as well um, looks like it's finished and it's got 230 megs you can see what it wants to do here so it's got a new version of Firefox to install uh, some upgrades for Ubuntu Chrome's got an update rhythm box and a big bunch of big bunch of system updates. So you've got security updates and other updates. Always good to keep up to date on these ones for sure. Uh, these ones not as much, but you do want to do that. Just keep your system up to date. Instead of putting all that antivirus and stuff in there, keep your stuff up to date. So all you would have to do is install now and it will go do its thing. Uh, if it does have to do any upgrades to the kernel uh, it will have to reboot but uh, usually you can you can wait out on that until you're done whatever you're doing and then give it a reboot. Unless it's a critical update then get it done as quick as you can. So we'll open up a terminal here and we have good old sudo for administrator privileges at hyphen get for our package manager again and what we want to do is we want to update so basically this will go out to whatever location we've set um, to get our package updates and it will just update the list essentially so it's going to hit all the places where it can get packages from it will read the lists and do an update I had already done an update with the the GUI version there so um, the next thing you would do is do an upgrade so same command just upgrade 
and it looks like we're still a little broken from before. That's interesting. <laughs> I did run out of an upgrade. Or app get update. Oh, there it goes. So, looks like it fixed itself. Wanted me to run it again. So basically, uh, right here is all the packages that uh, it's going to upgrade. So it tells you how many are there to upgrade. Um, it needs 171 megs to do that. And do you want to continue? I pushed Y and then hit Enter, and now it's getting all those packages. Then it'll unpackage all those packages. Shouldn't take too long. So this would basically be the same thing that would be happening in the GUI version, but uh, it's happening in the terminal. You can watch it happen. You can see what errors happen when they happen. Um, and it's easier to kind of find out how to fix things. So I, I generally prefer to do the updates through a terminal, but uh, it's up to you. So now it's unpack them all, doing setups on them. And it's done. So now the system is up to date. Uh, if you want to try that again, actually, you can do an update. Just to double check, make sure it's all good. run another upgrade and I'm just using the up arrow on the keyboard to bring those back up and yeah so that's how you update your system so you can do it through the GUI or through a terminal just a quick little video today but I figure I didn't really show how to do that on the previous video and it uh, would be a good idea to keep your systems up to date uh, if you have any questions or anything let me know Okay, it looks like we still have an issue with the fonts package from Wine when it crashed the other day. Um, you may or may not have this problem. We'll see. So I'm going to look for the MS Core fonts. Um, there's a program that I like to get. Uh, it's called Apti Aptitude, and I don't think they install it by default anymore. No. So if you try typing it, some some programs they'll tell you you can install it like this. I like to double click that line and then push your middle mouse button or your your uh, scroll wheel push that in. Type in a password and we'll get aptitude. I generally don't try to install things with aptitude but it does make a nice search. I think there is a way to search an apt as well. I'm, I'm not keen to it somebody may post in the comments below. So now I can aptitude search and there is a MS Core fonts in here. So MS Core, I'll just try searching that. And there is the TTF Core fonts installer. So I think what I'm going to try doing is sudo at get install, I think it's hyphen hyphen reinstall, and then the MS4 fonts installer. 
Okay. So, it wants us to agree here. I'm going to have to push tab to get down to that okay. And then I can push enter. And you can push tab to bounce back and forth these. If you don't want to agree and don't want to install. This is probably why it was taking uh, a long time before. Basically, what this package does is downloads a whole bunch of Windows fonts and tries to install them. But it's looking like uh, the core fonts. Oh, they're slowly going. So this is probably what what uh, the software center was hanging on. Um, and I forced quit it, which I shouldn't have done. Just let that stuff roll. But this is what you would have seen if you hadn't installed Wine through a terminal. And there, we should be okay now, I think. I think we can close this. If it pops up again, we'll get back to that later. But uh, you shouldn't have had to force quit the Wine install. Um, it just seemed to have hung up on the virtual box. But if it did, uh, that's how I would go about fixing it. For now, anyway, we'll see if it pops back up. I think it was just it wasn't able to download all these extra fonts during the installation, but it still looked like it was installed.